Um, I'm very happy now today to welcome Israel and Michel. In the session, we have many, many dance of Israel. And uh, I know story behind the, the dance. So we start. Thank you. First, thank you, Israel, to accept to be with us. A pleasure. It's, um, it's a good thing. It's, thank you so much. It's, uh, <laughs> and um, can you, I will start with uh, your story. You were born in uh, 1947. Long time ago, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in Rehobot. Right. And um, can you share with us when you start dancing? Actually, it was uh, um, in a kibbutz. I was in a youth movement in Kibbutz Nahalos, which is right by Gaza Street today. And um, afternoon activities, part of the elective was dancing, which uh, meant only girls only. But um, uh, I made an exception by joining the girls. And the boys looked at me like I'm a sissy, but I didn't mind because I enjoyed dancing so much. And um, the kibbutz decided that I'm good enough, so they sent me to Ulpan, to a seminar for teachers in Rehovot, in uh, Be'er Sheva. And I was uh, there for two years, studying with the Yossi Abu Ab mm. in uh, Ulpan for Madrichim. Uh, so when I graduated, I had a, was certified folk dance instructor, and I went back to the kibbutz for Friday night dancing <clears throat> on Shabbat. I was leading all the dancing over there, and uh, that was my first experience in Israeli folk dancing. Okay. And then uh, afterwards, I, after the service, three years in the army, um, I started dancing professionally on stages. Yes. Uh, for three um, or four years it, and then went to United States to uh, study abroad. I was a foreign student uh, in this country. Okay. And when you start to, to create, why did you decide to create dance? Thank you, oh, um, <clears throat> creating dances was an expression of, of my soul. Um, the feelings that I had inside toward music that dances did not exist. Um, artists express themselves in many ways. A, a painter take a brush and he make a picture. So I have I used my uh, artistic impression to create a dance as an expression of how I feel toward the music. So. <clears throat> That's basically the reason why I choreographed because it needs music need to be expressed with elements and steps and movement, and that was my main um, motivation. And and the dances at, at that time of Yemenite culture did not exist that um, that much. It was most mostly Israeli folk dancing. Uh, the only few who were doing something uh, in that nature was Moshiko, Yankale Levi, um, Ben Tiram, but they touched it on a very light basic. I, I went a little bit deeper into um, you know her my heritage and Yemenite culture by actually studying uh, <clears throat> more into the I researched more into the basic elements and steps, uh, picking up on what Gurit Kadman did when she went out from village to village documenting uh, Yemenite dancing. And, and I went myself uh, in, in Israel to study some of those villages and picked up some elements and steps in order to preserve the Yemenite culture. And I, I try to emulate mostly what I've studied and learned, but also tried not to influence too much of my own expression as far as today's uh, elements and music and dance. So mm -hmm. it was a very, you know, narrow road of uh, how to 
maintain the culture and not change uh, the basic elements of Yemenite steps. Israel, can I share, I would like to share now three dance of you. The first one is a 1975 in Min Alou. Oh, yes. Uh, that was a line dance, and that's exactly what I was talking about as far as picking up elements from Gurit Kadman. Mm -hmm. uh, she showed the Haidani uh, tribe moving forward and back, man dance, um, showing strength and, ele you know, and I used all that powerful movement back and forward in my dance, Imni Nalu. And it's a combina combination of two songs. One of them is uh, uh, for Yom Kippur, and, and the other dance is also, uh, the other part of it is also uh, for Yom Kippur uh, music. Uh, Israel, I would like to share in Inahalu, Arot Yanutana, and uh, Agadelra. In Agadelra, I, I uh, use mm -hmm. some basic elements. Yes. There was a uh, describe the 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 power of the prayers uh, uh, to God.
a story about Achot Lanu Ktana. That's why I turned on the video. It was like three in the morning, and we were doing a camp in San Francisco area with Dani Dasa, Shlomo Bachar, and myself that I organized, try to expand our camps to the north. So it's like three in the morning, and Dani and I are sitting alone at the end of Arkada, and I'm going to show, I said, I said to Dani Dasa, watch this dance, tell me how do you like it. So I did, I only had the first and the second part to the dance, and I didn't have the last part. So Danny got up, he liked it so much, he said, maybe I can help you. So he showed me some steps into the last part of the dance. I looked at him like he's crazy. I said, that's not exactly Yemenite. <laughs> maybe it's a Sephardic. So I, I said, okay, just sit down. I'll, I'll show you what I think I have in mind. And I did exactly what I just uh, finished doing on a video. And he says, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> so the dance was complete. Then Yanka Levy came to uh, United States to a dance camp that we organized. And he saw Hotla Nuktana. He decided he's going to go back to Israel and teach it. But he was not allowed because the dance was created not in Israel. Mm. At that time, they were forbidden to teach dances from abroad. So he, he told uh, Yoav Ashriel in Ish Talmud that his dance. So he passed it as Yanka Lelevi's dance. That's why the last part was so screwed up. But uh, that's, uh, he, I guess he had amnesia in the airplane. But in Israel, they're doing it terribly wrong, the last part of the dance. But I'm happy that he, you know, he taught the dance. Later, of course, he corrected it. He told them that it's my dance. Oh, hey. <laughs> Who is this? Hey, Joni. Joni, for people who doesn't know her, she's a very famous dancer. She knows so many Debka and... Uh, and dance of Israel. She's very close of Israel. She knows everything. Yeah. Not everything. And Definitely. she's a part of everything that I create. I always ask her opinion. I, I, she used to stay dancing after dancing at, uh, at, uh, at Westwood. And yeah. I would say, look, uh, Joni, I have this part A. And I have part B. What do you <laughs> what do you think I should do? And she would give me her opinion, and it would be very valuable. She's um, yes, she follow you, and uh, she know how to dance your dance with your style. And uh, we have, uh, we have to, not so many people who can do it with. Uh, <laughs> Israel, Israel Yaakovic style, right? It, it makes my day to dance with him. He, they, they, I don't know, his dances just go right to my heart. <laughs> so, seriously, I, I, it's so much fun dancing his dances. Well, you so are thanks. somewhere, you somewhere uh, have a Yemenite blood in you. That's the secret. I think so. I'm the yeah. Yemenite Mondini. Somewhere in your ancestry. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, Israel, we continue with sharing the video with Sar Amemuna, Shavnu, and uh, Avat Shaddai. Both of the two last days, Shavnu and Avat Shaddai, singing by Sion uh, Golan. You did a lot of dance songs so by... He uh, was the king of Yemenite yeah. music. 100%. Ma many dance he still of Israel is for are the last sung by... 30 or 40 years. Yes. He is. <clears throat> With uh, Sar Amemuna. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 
שבנו לארץ האבות. שווים למקורות, מהם ינקו אבות לפני אלפיים שנות. אל המקום אשר הוביל האלוהים, את אברהם אבינו הישר מאור כסדים. באנו אל הכפרים, ישבנו בערים, שכם היטלו יחד נטל אל ההרים. חרשנו הצדדות, עלנו הכבישים, וברובע חזנו להלשפושים. שבנו שבנו, הבנים ובני הבנות, שבנו כולנו בארץ האבות. עמקי אמרנו, נשאולים אחר בצרות, נתגברנו, ואף נמשיך לבנות, לבנות, לבנות. לא ביקשנו לנו גן ולא מספר לבן, רק חלקת אדמה וגשם מענן, שיהיה לברכה באדמת ישראל, וכל השאר יגיע בעזרת האל. גרנו באוהלים טובי לב ושמחים, שפע אז לא היה והתנאים קשים, היום ברוך השם כולם מסודרים, כל טוב השם עמנו דבר לא חסרים. שבנו שבנו הבנים והבנות שבנו כולנו לארץ האבות אף כי עברנו מכשולים אחר בצרות התגברנו ואף נמשיך לבנות 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 עברנו מלחמות, היו גם משברים, למדנו גם מעט מנהג של אחרים, אבל למרות הכל עם כל החידושים, שומרים ניגוד של אהבה ועל השורשים. כן, עוד נוסיף לבנות בארץ האבות, היא לנו יחידה ואין לה עוד אחות, מה במהרה יוסיף ייתן האלוהים, שלום עם בני דודינו ואחוות אחים. שבנו שבנו הבנים והבנות שבנו כולנו לארץ האבות אף כי עברנו מכשולים הרבה צרות And now we have a dance, couple dance partners, Avat Shadai.
Can I say something about uh, three dances? Yes. Uh, so, Memune, the first dance you saw, uh, I was invited to Japan. I taught at Camp Stockton International Folk Dance Camp, and I met some people from the Folk Dance Federation of Japan, and um, they asked me to come and teach. So I was a guest for three weeks, and I, I noticed that they love all kind of hand gestures movement. So I created Sarah Memune and taught it everywhere over there and, and they, they love that they love this kind of music and they love this movement. They're and they're they're amazingly precise. You see one person dance, <clears throat> they lift their knee in one level and the whole line is in the same line of a level of the the knee. So they're amazing dancers over there. Uh, Shavnu, I created uh, when I was planning to return to Israel in 1984. I was already um, making plans to return back home with my wife and three children. And um, so I figured that'll be the dance of me introducing uh, as a song that says returning to the homeland. And uh, Bachada, it was uh, a beautiful couple dance that I uh, danced with my sister, Yoni, if you saw her on a video. Yes. Uh, that was at her camp, Camp Yona in uh, Southern California. And that's an interesting dance. It's a little bit out of the box and has a little different ideas and concept uh, in the choreography, which is uh, I always what I seek. 
I try to find things that are different. You know, most choreographers uh, face to the right and make dances go on the right side. I always try to change it and go left and face uh, opposition with the clock. So <clears throat> I challenge myself constantly to make things different and new, you know? Otherwise, why are we creative? You know? You, you gotta challenge have you new. and you challenge us. Yes, 100%. Yes. yes. <laughs> so you're um, just said, I just want to say that you're just, you and Yoni dancing together, uh, Yoni and you dancing together, it's uh, amazing. Amazing, yes. I agree. We were professionally on stage uh, doing uh, performances and my sister actually is a uh, ballerina. She was a, a soloist in most of the shows and performances that she went out with, you know, on tour with Israel. Uh, she was a solo dancer at Carmiel, uh, at Carmon. Uh, she was a solo dancer at Inbal, and uh, we danced together in a musical show called Hello Dolly. And I have, happened to have my sister as my partner, and for nine months we were on stage together. You know, I tried pleasure. to find the video from Hello Dolly, but I didn't find it. Oh, it's impossible. Yoni's coming now. Okay. Yoni okay. is joining us now. Yes, yes, I send her the... the yeah. Uh, Michelle just called her. Yes, she and be uh, listening to this. yeah. And uh, can you speak about your uh, you you work or you dance with a lot of perform group like Batsheva, Inbal, Carmen? You dance for Carmen dancer, no? No, I no? I, I was not a part of the Carmen. Uh, I went to rehearsal uh, <clears throat> for a few months. And I never joined because they were going out to Paris uh, for a tour. And um, it sh my sister came uh, and yanked me out. She says, go, there's addition to Hello Dolly. So I went over there and got myself hired. Yes. I really look for the Hello Dolly video, but impossible no, it's, to find it's hard it. to find. You can, you're going to see some of it on YouTube with the Hannah Maron when she passed away. They put her on and they show some of the segment from Hello Dolly. But we were on, you know, nine months performing every night in Yafo on stage, musical show. And that, that was my taste of a professional dancer. Mm. So once I figure out that I can dance, I said, okay, now it's time to go abroad and, and become a student and get an education. So my brother helped me out getting to Los Angeles and I started studying here and then dancing at nighttime to make some money, teaching Israeli dance. I need Israeli dance or do you did something else? Uh, basically it was uh, uh, dancing in the evenings and studying in the daytime. Then uh, when I graduated, I worked two years in a hospital uh, doing physical therapy. And then I had more and more invitations to abroad to go and teach and, and be a guest. So I had to quit uh, the hospital and allow myself for more teaching and choreography. So that's, that's why I went to full-time professional dancer, choreographer mm -hmm. and teacher. Yeah. Uh, Israel, I want to share some uh, now another video. Some of them are very, very, very. Some dance are very popular. <laughs>
So yeah, you can say we, I. We have a story for you. Okay. I think we start from Shufni, the last yes. one. Uh, we were on uh, dating remote control from East Coast to West Coast, and um, the rest uh, Michelle will tell you about how did it happen. Okay. Shufni. So what he wants me to tell you is, um, so this dates the story, but I was listening to a cassette in the car that Israel had given me of Tion Golan. And I had to wait until I got home because I didn't have a cell phone, right? So I, I called him from home. So there's this one song on that cassette that's really good. Have you thought about making a dance to it? And that was Shufni. So that's, that's my one contribution to Israeli folk dancing. <laughs> The other story that I wanted to, to share, which I, I always laugh at, is Daudahia. So Israel came to New York, to Kef, with, to Hora Kef, with a new dance, Daudahia, and he stayed with us in our apartment the night before Kef, and he's playing us the song. And us, all Americans, listened to it and said, oh my God, that's terrible. She was killed for being pregnant. Out and, of wedlock. And, right, out of wedlock, right? That's <laughs> the story. And Israel looked at me like, he had no idea that that's what the song was about because he never really listened to the English words. He only exactly. listened to the yeah. to the Hebrew. So he taught it anyway, and it's a great dance. But uh, but that's our that's our quick story. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> she says she she didn't know the name of the song. She just goes, "Oh, the song goes like Shufni." I said, "Hey, I already cut the music, and it's ready. Uh, the dance is almost ready." Mm -hmm. She was ahead of me, but I was ahead of her at that time. Um, I actually started the dance from the middle. <clears throat> this is Maya. Our Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Hi. How are you? Our gorgeous, beautiful daughter, Maya. She's, oh. she's grown from, uh, I saw her two years ago. No, well. no yeah, she's tall, she's beautiful much bigger. So Shufni, I started from the middle. Um, I, I, that was the part that stood out the most for me. And then I uh, went back and, and did the beginning of it. And I still didn't have an ending. So I was invited to teach in San Francisco and I, they wanted a new dance. So I figured I'll introduce this one. But I didn't have an ending to it. Oh, it was way too long and too complicated. So I went over there and I taught it the way it was. And I came home and changed it. I changed it from 64 bars to, to 16, only half. So I made it a, a different ending, but a better ending, which fits perfectly. And Dao Dahia, um, Ofa Haza, came to Los Angeles to record her latest uh, CD. And they... In invited me to come to the studio because they had a new song for me to make a dance to. Um, so I came to the studio to pick up a new song and that was Daudahia. Betalel, the manager says, uh, we want you to make a dance to this song, to promote it. So I did and I went to New York and taught it. I had no idea what it means in English. I did never pay attention to it. <laughs> And then later on, when I recut it, I took out, I think, no, I, I left the English part in it. Yeah. But, uh, and I also went to Beni Asulin camp in uh, France, Mahola Shalom, I think. Yes. And taught, taught the Dahia. So I think they have been uh, exposed to it over there. And yes, Abba Shimon. Was in, uh, two, Abba two, Shimon. Two first three, two, yes. I don't remember the year. Yeah. Abba Shimon. We had two opposition camp at the same time in the East Coast. Uh, one with Dani Uziel and Shmuli Govari, and the other one was uh, Hora Shalom with Moshe Skyo. They already split the camps. Huh? Opposite. Kef was Skyo. Okay, so Kef was Skyo. So I went over there and I taught Abba Shimon. And at the same time, the same, uh, the opposite camp, Shmuli taught Abba Shimon. He has his own version of a dance. So we both picked up the same song and made different dances. I haven't seen Shmulik's dance, but uh, just so it happened, uh, <laughs> one dance was stronger than the other. It's always happened that way. 
Yeah, One this happens also. sometimes. You have a dance with uh, Ledunia and uh, Dana Dana. Oh, yeah. That was, was, that was another one, yeah. But this one, Shmuli Queen. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Abba Shimon is a really great dance. It's fun to dance. He's a uh, Saba Shimon by now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now we start, we come back to share some video, we start with Inshallah, Yes. Ima Brara, you have oh, to tell something, okay. and Matar, Matar is okay. very, very popular. Yes. Uh, Inshallah. 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 Shall I am for a 
One, two, three, and away. What dance you want me to tell you about? Ima Bracha. Ima Bracha. You know, I told you the reason for choreography and creative dances. It's also an expression of emotion. Uh, when my mother died in 91, that was her favorite song. Uh, she constantly sang this song at home. And when she passed away, that was my way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Israel, for sharing with us. You want I share some video? No, it's okay. Okay. I just uh, have to say that you have a great thing for uh, Eddie Greenbelt. She couldn't be with us, but she said that she always loved learning from you and dancing with you. And uh, you made her a better dancer. And um, I would like to share. Okay, Yoni, do you have something to say? Yes, thanks. So about Israel, I want to say something. Okay? Yes. So, um, Israel, not because he's my brother. So, I'm not biased what I'm going to say. He is, in my eyes, one of the best choreographer. And I love and admire him. And the, one of the things that I found very special about Israel is the way he plays with the beat of the music. The in-between of the music, the syncopation, the feeling it rhythm that when I, when I see the dance, I say, how the hell did he get up to this 
uh, read them and I could see even people when he teach trying to figure out what, you know, how did he do it? How did he feel the rhythm in between? I find him very, very uh, fascinating. How does he get the music beat, the count, the note, the dance note in between things? He's playing with it beautifully. And that's one. And then think his dances are uh, like a Yemenite style uh, primitive, and then he goes to Yemenite rap. For example, Yemenite rap is one of the dances that he does in between those games. Actually, almost every dance, and almost every dance he played beautifully with the rhythm. But, um, and look how he went from real Yemenite authentic to doing like smart, like Yemenite rap. Yes, and others, Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom also. Shabbat Shalom is one of them too. Uh, Yemenite rap is look like it's more famous, but Shabbat Shalom is beautiful dance, playing with the music like this. So in my eyes, you know, if I hold, if I hold up the now without insulting any other choreographer, I got a lot of respect to all of them that create, but putting Eskayo, Moshiko, uh, Israel, Shmuli Govari, I mean, there are some group that I looking at them like really, really made me feel they creating some special thing rather than just beautiful dances, which I don't need to remind, to say which choreographer. However, I hold them up and Israel is one of the, one of them up, up there in my life. And I admire him, I admire him. I never forget when I came from upstate New York, I was doing a teaching ballroom dancing at the Concord Hotel and, um, and some exercise. And then he came to New York because Horakef was in New York. He always came to me, slept overnight. We had Jahnun in the morning. And so I never forgot, like I was, I, I looked at uh, Miriam Handler and uh, Danny Ozell, they come upstate New York to give a camp, an international camp. And so I, I did thing on stage, but not Israeli folk dancing regular. And so when my brother came, he said to me, I forgot, I think it was Agadelcha. Agadelcha. He yep. said to me, you want to see a dance that I choreograph? I say, sure. And then he's like, I was like amazed to see my brother choreographing a dance. And then I came up to, uh, to, to California and I saw a big session, dance session and big camps. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe my brother is doing all these big things. I was really, really, I really admire Israel with all my heart. Thank you. You're welcome. Israel? Ken. Um, so, Ken, toda, Hoti. You're welcome. Uh, I always admired my sister. I was known in Israel as Yoni's brother. <laughs> I had no name because she's such a prima ballerina. Every oh, place I, I went dancing or anywhere I went, they go, oh, yeah, that's Yoni's brother. <laughs> I had no name. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going back to Inshallah, the dance you just saw. Um, Inshallah was a song by Hedva Amrani, which is a Yemenite uh, singer. She wrote the words and uh, the melodies and she sang it. It was for uh, um, bringing some of the remaining Yemenite Jews in Yemen to Israel. So for that, she made a song, Inshallah, which actually uh, original uh, song title was Ahenu B'nai Teman, our brothers in Yemen. So she, we met uh, at her house. I went to her house and she says, I have a great song that I would like you to make a dance to. And I <clears throat> choreographed the dance as a women dance. And uh, the actual movement in the beginning is a caravan of camels going through the desert. That's why they all this sway motion and movements with a, with a line dance and hands behind the back. And then the, um, the middle part was showing the strength of a woman uh, in her movement. And you see my sister and my daughter, Ronit, performing it so well at Camp Finjan. 
um, I think I taught this also in uh, Europe, and they 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 yes. doing it in England and other places that in Europe it really caught up uh, and lasted very well. And Mata uh, Michelle was nine months pregnant, so the whole step of going inside and outside. I think I introduced it first time at Camp Unite, my sister camp. It was all imitating my uh, wife being pregnant and uh, we were all holding our stomach going doing the step inside. Mata was a very daring dance because it's uh, highly syncopated and very, very stylish. Uh, I don't think in too many people can actually do it properly, but it is, speaks to the most, most Yemenite uh, dancers who love Yemenite culture because it's really ethnic. It's very, very strongly ethnic. And Ima Bracha, I also introduced it first time at the ticket camp, you now at my sister camp, or reintroduced it maybe. Uh, but that was uh, the dance that I kind of like put a, a tomb on my mother's uh, grave. And that's it. Mm. Thanks, thank you, um, Israel, for sharing the story and everything. And I will continue to share some video with a dance partners that I like really um, so much. Can you yes. Synchronize? Is there any way you can synchronize the sound with the steps because there is a delay? It's okay. Creating an injustice. I thought I know you can caliber on your side. Uh, yes. See if you can uh, match the music with the dance. It's not in a, it's a video, so it's supposed to be in sync. I'm not sure. Maybe we see a delay here on our end. Okay. We have to find out from the rest of the, the participants. Okay. Because they see this around the world. Mm -hmm. They may we'll or may see. not have a delay. We'll see if it's now better or not. Okay. Uh, I would like to share Alelio.
now we have Rab Temani, Yemenit Rab. Ariku Daba, Rab Temani, eh, Ofa, Arba.
Israel? Yeah, I have, now I have, it's a payback. I have to say something about my sister. Yes. <laughs> so she started to make camps um, in Southern California called Camp Yona. And I started to dance and do uh, my dances with my sister, which was impressive, beautiful, gorgeous. It was just um, hard for me to imagine me dancing with my sister, the prima ballerina from, from Inbal, who is now Israeli folk dance teacher. So it was a great honor for me to teach my dances with my sister. It's because she, there's no one can come close to her ability to do uh, my dances. So thank you. That was my compliment back to my sister, which she certainly deserved. It. She made her own dances. She created some beautiful dances of her own. Um, I remember she taught in '94 at Camp Finn John, uh, the Karel Mahibba, which is a beautiful, gorgeous Yemenite circle dance. I don't know <clears throat> why it didn't catch on, but it was beautifully choreographed, and I think it should have been done even today. But then she made other dances, and she became a very famous uh, choreographer in Israel. They do Pithi et Libech and some other dances that are still done today. Yes. So I'm honored to be dancing with my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we shared the video of Yoni last month in the woman session. Right, thank you. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Thank you again. Israel, thank you. My pleasure. And uh, yeah. do we have something to say about uh, Ratuna Femani? Yeah, um, we actually um, performed it with costumes at her camp, in Camp Yona. Uh, the dance itself is uh, sort of like bringing the husband and wife for first time uh, in, in Yemenite uh, costume, uh, the wedding is arranged. So they don't get to see each other. They don't even know who they're mar marrying. So. And the whole dance is, is a little play of games of him trying to figure out who his wife to be is. And it's a little uh, enticing to challenging to figure out, you know, in the dance itself, how they play that particular element of the, uh, the dance. So that's, it's, you know, basically that's all it is. Israel, I want to just to share something with you. Uh, you can mute uh, and say hi. Do you, uh, Frédéric and uh, Solveig. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Well, yeah. fine. We are in the holidays uh, in Brittany near the sea. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you remember yeah. my dance, uh, I did the dance at Natemani with the costume. Yes. Yes. I, I saw the video where you, you dance it with uh, Yoni with costume and uh, I tried to find some costume at home and uh, after I, uh, I made the dance with my wife Sulvey at wow. our summer camp at Yen with Vincent, Ariane and all the, the other person of the staff. Beautiful. I'm happy that I added something to your life. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very great, great dance. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Fred. It was nice. It was very nice. And I uh, just want to continue with some dance with new, more new. It's a uh, Yama Shabbat. And, uh, uh, before that, can I say yes. something about Yemenite rap? Yes. Um, uh, Tion Golan <clears throat> came out with a gorgeous new rendition, more modern music. And um, this is the first time I was splicing and cutting and using the computer to make a dance. So I was sitting on my computer and I asked Michelle to help me out. You remember? <laughs> so she did all the splicing and cutting on the computer and I 
kind of like wanted to make it modern and instrumental at the same time. The elements of the dance was to bring back the first part, to bring back some of the young people into the, to the dance floor because we were getting no young people on the floor. So I wanted to do something that it's upbeat and, and modern. And the second part was maintaining old tradition and you know basic elements of Yemenite steps. So that was a, a, a mix of two halves. I introduced it first time at Hagiga in uh, 2011 or one, I think 2001, something like that. And that was uh, where all the teachers came to Hagiga. There was like 10 or 15 Israeli folk dance teachers from Israel. And I introduced this dance for first time at Hagiga on Sunday, four o'clock, the last session. And it was like earthquake. <laughs> it like earthquake hit the, the, the room. Uh, it was a big boom and uh, everybody was so excited and Gadi and Dudu and everybody come to me. They wanted to teach this dance right away in Israel. So it became a big hit since then. I had no idea why it all getting so excited. I never know what the dance gonna look like, you know, when I choreograph the dance. So it's always a big surprise, but that's not what I choreograph. I choreograph in order to preserve my dances and create a dances. So, I remember when I saw uh, Haptemani the first time, I said, wow, it's different. <laughs> the song and the music yes. was very different and it's good. Oh, yeah. It's a, like modern Temani, so. Yeah, for sure. Good. And we start with modern, more Yama Shabbat. Yes. Yes. Yep. Wrong one. Right. I think it's Yom Shabbat. Because it was really <clears throat> very, very stylish dance. But I'm glad you're doing it. It's, uh, we dance it a lot when uh, the dance you you did uh, just right after Carmiel. In my session, we did it a lot. Great. It's a very different dance, and it's a hundred percent perfect. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And uh, I think I missed something. Yom Shabbat. Yes. Yom Shabbat uh, <clears throat> was a dance that. Um, I was attempting to bring Ethiopian, young Ethiopian uh, Jews that just arrived from, to Israel, and uh, maybe influenced them since Idan Reichel came up with a gorgeous combination of, of Yemenite and Ethiopian music together. So he mixed it so well, I figured I might as well use it as an attempt to bring maybe Ethiopian Jews, young ones, to the dance floor to join us in Israeli dancing. And uh, I made it in two halves where the first half is a hip hop and the second half was traditional Yemeni, just the way Idan Reichel uh, intended to do. And um, I didn't see Ethiopians <laughs> joining Israeli folk dancing, but mm -hmm. that was my attempt to actually make this dance. Uh, that was my interpretation of uh, what the Ethiopian dance may look like. You know, they have a lot more shoulder movement, which I didn't incorporate, but that was my interpretation of what the dance should look like. And uh, Galut Teman? Galut Teman is more, uh, like I wrote just now, that it's more reggae, like reggae Temani. Yeah, it is, definitely. <clears throat> that la the group called Ketem Paz, which is a, a group in, uh, in Israel who does uh, Yemenite groove music. Um, it's funny because uh, a, a lady in uh, France uh, sent me the music. She says, maybe you should make a dance to it. So I listened to it and I cut it immediately, sent it back to her. And she said, I said, 
how do you feel about it? And she says, oh, that's beautiful. So it was, again, another uh, in interpretation of uh, traditional Yemenite elements movement, where basic men dance start slow and fast, and I made it manage to tailor them together perfectly. So that was <clears throat> my uh, attempt uh, on this one to uh, create a dance that present men dance. Mm -hmm. I would like to share a um, last dance and uh, have some questions for you after the, this one. Okay. Uh, it's Aiwa. Oh. Song by Aiwa. My favorite. With Johnny and Chad, the leader of the Israel, I have to say that Aiwa is a very, very famous group in, in France. Exactly. Yeah, they travel all over Europe and they're big. <clears throat> uh, I noticed them when they started and I immediately was attracted to that song. And uh, I, I need to also to give you a little bit story to how every dance that I choreograph is become a dance. Uh, most of my inspiration in couple dances is my wife, Michelle, mm -hmm. because she's at home with me and I find music and I, I said, let's do it this way and let's do it that way. And, and she's, she's just uh, so good and such a gorgeous dancer and I might be biased, but it's true. She is my inspiration also. Uh, and when we choreograph a dance like Iwa, Ewa, uh, I invite Joni and Michelle and Liat, and we do kind of like a group session at home. We try the dance. I ask for opinion. I ask for changes. I give them option uh, one, option two. What do you think? So it's, it becomes like a group effort. And yeah, I understand why Joni 
in Marola, when you taught it in the morning, because every time your session is in the morning after a full night of dance, I and know. don't stay until the end. Yeah. And she can dance in the morning. Now I understand why. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, she, you know, the best way to demonstrate a dance is with good dancers. So Michelle is number one, and then Joni and Liat, and they always uh, with me for many years. For sure, and Ewa, the dance itself is a you know another attempt to move forward with the elements and music and dance, you know because Ewa was not that big when the when I picked up the song, but when I promote the dance, I also promote the 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 group, mm -hmm. so I think they got a lot of exposure by having the dance choreograph to their music, but they they're big on their own. They're actually, you know, the, the music is being loved and listened to all over the world now. And yes. just three Yemenite girls from a village. Very simple uh, girls. In Paris, when they came in Paris, from the first second to the last second of the show, the atmosphere is amazing. I know, yeah. Highly energetic music. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to leave you, but thank you for doing this. Um, I'll let you guys keep going. She have a Zoom session with her parents. Okay. Thank you, Michelle, to, for being with us. And uh, Israel, I have some questions for you to close the session. Um, what is mean Rikudem for you? What's the question again? What, what is for you Rikudem? What is a uh, represent for you? For me, uh, is uh, my life. Um, I have chosen, made it um, my own uh, uh, future. Uh, it, it was how I express myself. That were uh, that was the outlet for me to uh, show. Uh, myself as a, a dancer and also a way of life, you know, mm -hmm. organizing camps, going on workshop, touring. There are a few people who actually work in something they love. 90% of the people they work, they hate what they work and that's a third of their life. And I was lucky to uh, enjoy life and enjoy what I was considering work, which is not. For me, it was pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I've always come home with a paycheck. So <laughs> I was lucky to have a job that I could count as a real, you know, money making. I, would be, I wouldn't be a millionaire, but I was coming home with a smile. I was very happy. That's, uh, that's why I also doing a DJ, uh, weddings, bar mitzvahs, parties. Uh, that's my my way of uh, earning income and enjoying life. All those come with pleasure. And uh, you follow the atmosphere, not the atmosphere, how did you say? From You can create from uh, Yemenite regular ethnic, very ethnic uh, Yemenite, and you go to the more modern with Rab Temani or Yom Shabbat or Galut Teman, it's something different, more modern to touch maybe more young people. What do you think now about what, how is grow, how the Rikudeam became now? What, uh, how you uh, saw, uh, what do you do? Do you think about the, what is Rikudeam now? And what do you think for the future? Uh, it's definitely evolved, there's no question. Mm. Um, I don't necessarily uh, like what I see as far as the young choreographers. I don't think they actually go back far enough into their heritage, into the, what they actually can produce as far as folk songs and folk dances. Uh, they're moving along with a new music in Israel, which is not necessarily keeping up with a traditional Israeli so-called music that we used to uh, dance then, but maybe it, we have no control over it. Maybe it's a pattern of 
what Israeli dancing is evolved. But I personally, I don't think the, the new or the young choreographers are digging enough into their past. I don't think they're actually trying hard to bring out the ethnic parts of the backgrounds. Uh, for example, uh, Gadi Biton should do more dances that relate to uh, his background, which is Moroccan. He made few of them. Um, uh, Raya and some other dances that, that, you know, but I don't think he's digging back enough to his background. I think so, so many choreographers can do some more work on asking themselves how to dig into their tradition, their culture, and bring that into the, the you know, to the dance floor. Uh, and just taking out hip songs and the, the most popular songs off the radio is not enough. It's not enough to make the dance long. It's not enough to make it a, a real folk dance. And that's why you see dances last no more than three months. You know, mm -hmm. dances that I choreographed 30 years ago are still being done. And you, you know, you have to ask a question, why? What makes the dance different and what makes it last? Mm -hmm. So that's my only uh, question and demand from Israeli folk dance teacher and choreographers in Israel. Try to go back a little, you know, don't always just move forward with the music, but stop the clock and demand of yourself to do things that are more ethnic, more cultural. And that's what's missing. It's not anymore folk dance, Israeli folk dance, it's only no. Israeli dance. It is, it, it is an Israeli recreation dance. And that's a shame because we should have maintained it as folk dance. But the traditional goes, goes 80 years. So as a folk dancer, you can pick up whatever era you want to be in. If you want to do nostalgia, you go back to the 70s. If you want to do modern, you go to 2000. You know, so folk dancers and dance leaders can actually pick what era they want their session to be a focal point mm -hmm. and it's really up to every madrich you know in your own session to maintain their own uh, culture unfortunately the population of israeli folk dancers in israel are getting old and they don't keep up with the new stuff so they create sessions of nostalgia which is maintaining what they were dancing when they were young so <clears throat> nowadays People go whatever they want, and people do and dance whatever they, era they want to belong to. We can see that uh, in Israel that you have more and more um, nostalgia. Exactly. Uh, nostalgia session. Yeah, it's because those people are, are got too tired. There's a flood of new dances. You come every night, there's more new dances. And, uh, you know, at the age of 60 and 70, you no longer can tolerate the speed and, and the, the, the way music is going on today. And they don't relate necessarily to the new music. So they like to go back to the dances that when they were young, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works as far as folk dancers relate to Israeli dancing. That's my analysis. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I share? Uh, do you want I share another last video from you from your dance, like uh, Yonati? Um, Yonati was a dance that uh, I try to create for women as a women dance. Uh, I named it after my grandma and my sister, uh, Yoni. And uh, it was also a lot of styles in it that has to do with the, you know, women dance. And it was like as ethnic as uh, Mata was. Mm -hmm. The same singer, the same spirit, the same energy. Yes. So we, I, just, uh, I just want to say again, thank you, Israel. I would like to share the video and come back to you to open the microphone to everybody, for everybody to say hi, to speak with you and close the session.
Thank, Thank you. you. A pleasure. ריקוד מעגל something about Israel, if you have to go, if you can go to Los Angeles, to Marola or to Los Angeles, that's it. Go to visit Israel. He is a chef. He is the best cooker in, uh, <laughs> that I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. He is cooking the most Beautiful. I don't know how to say the good taste of uh, Yemenite soup. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's uh, very, I really, really enjoy to, that you are with us. We I, have a mixed uh, uh, food here. Michelle makes the Ashkenazi and I make the Yemenite. And right. our children grew to learn both of it. So right. we have traditional soup, uh, Yemenite soup uh, on Passover with the uh, knedelach in a soup. <laughs> so it's a mix. Okay. I open yeah. the microphone for everybody. You uh, can say hi, you can... Thank you. I, I want to say something. Hi, Joni, it's Ellen. Weber. Hey. Hey. Israel, I remember one time when you were in Philadelphia Wherever you were teaching, you were at my place first, and you made us shakshuka. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> the Israel shakshuka is very good. I tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I tell you this. The this tune you did, Sharabi, and I just want to tell you this is Judy Sharabi from Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, my grandmother in Sana was a dancer at Yurik Hena and a singer. And when we moved What? back, when they moved to Israel, those are the songs that I heard from her in my childhood. She passed away when I was 12. And I have to say from the bottom of my heart, you brought back memories and tears in my eyes. So thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. Johnny, do you have something to 
The, you know what? The, I, I was going to add um, just one comment about how special Israel's dances are. Um, I had been working with him on a dance uh, years ago, and um, I had made a suggestion. And I said, you know, maybe it's a little complicated. Maybe if you change this, you know, it'll be more more popular for the, the regular crowd. And he said, you know, it's okay. I don't mind if it's not popular with a, a million people. This is what, this is how it speaks to me. This is how it speaks to my heart and how this dance is special for me. And that comment just really stuck with me for, for a long time. And I realized just, you know, it's not two of these, two of these, two of these, and put it all together and you have a dance. Like Israel's dances really have meaning and are special and really speak to him. And I hope they speak to everyone else the same way. So thank you, Israel, for really creating this amazing creation. Joni, I can, I can tell you something that you didn't know. After the camp at Meholah, Shlomo Maman was at my house for two days. I was doing some uh, editing uh, video for him and making a library for all his collection. He used to walk around with a, a discon key and he had no collection or library of all his videos. So it's for two days he was at the house. And then he, he said that he wants to make a suggestion for me on Ewa. He said, <laughs> the dance is too complicated. <clears throat> and we were dancing it in the living room. <laughs> and he says, I think you should change the middle part to make it a little bit simple so people can actually uh, be able to do the dance. So he showed me his interpretation of the second part. I said, oh, it's worth looking at, into it. And of course, I didn't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, say, was it. <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't want to offend him, but I said it, it, it's worth to look into it. I would look into it. So that was it. Do don't, don't tell think, Mama. Do you, think I that, do you think that there are too many ballet dancers rather than Israeli dancers, the Yemenite dance, which is much lower down, and you've got all everyone coming in like that? It's very, it's, I, I find the dance that we had used to do has become very formal and, you know, everyone comes from a ballet group, as it were. Uh, indeed, I think uh, the, the younger dancers and the, also the choreography that leads them into it are lean toward like uh, more modern movement like and too. steps and dances. So you see a lot of emulation of Irish dancers uh, and uh, some, some basic steps are not necessary folk dances or folk step. So unfortunately it becomes more recreation and modern dance rather than folk dance. That's my interpretation. I, I love your dances. Thank you. Feel, you feel it. And that's Thank the you. Difference. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not easy to make a dance that has uh, soul. And that's what lacking, soul. You know, you yeah. need to create music that has soul, that, uh, that the element of the dance is it's actually the matching that soul. And once a soul dance and steps are put together, you feel the spirit of the song through the soul and the dances, the dance actually is complete. Dance without a soul is just a recreation dance. I have uh, a question to Yoni and Israel. Do you understand all the words? Uh, I don't think Yoni is still on, but I, I can answer. Uh, we learn to listen yes, to our... Here. Oh, she's here? Okay, yeah. so I'll, exp I'll answer to myself first. Our grandma, did not speak Hebrew. She spoke Yemenite. So she used to holler and yell at us in Yemenite. And I picked up some of her 
uh, words and you know basic everyday communication but not fluent enough to communicate or speak the language or understand the song. I later on, once I started choreographing, I paid more attention to the language. So I picked up some more and learned some more uh, of what the song says. Uh, actually, I put it to a test. I went to, when I went to Egypt to uh, visit uh, and I spoke the, a little bit of what Yemenite I had and they were actually able to communicate and, and understand me. The Egyptian uh, Arabic was very similar to the Yemenite I had. And that was basically it. Right. I don't know about so my much. sister, Yoni. Ah, okay. Uh, in our house, when uh, my father wanted to hint, they spoke Hebrew, but many times, like if he would want to tell my mother something secret, he would switch to Yemenite. <laughs> but we always knew at that time what he said because he always repeated. So we knew those. Um, all our street were Yemenite people and they were talking Yemenite a lot. So we picked up some Yemenite. As a matter of fact, even today, I think I understand more when I hear Yemenite people, but we did not speak Yemenite our kids did not speak Yemenite, but we picked up some. You only <laughs> forgot I... something. You only forgot something. What? We, my, my parents spoke Yemenite, but we create our own language. Yes. So the parents cannot understand. We reverse <laughs> Hebrew. <laughs> we reverse Safa. Hebrew. Safa. Yeah, we reverse the language. We yeah. spoke Hebrew backwards. So our That's... parents actually didn't pick up that language. Yeah. Do I have permission to say something about hello Dolly and you? Please. Okay. Uh, Ariane, do we have a few minutes or no? Ariane, you have uh, as, <laughs> long, as long you want. No problem. Uh, so uh, in Israel, I was in hello Dolly. And uh, Rivka Raz was there, and then Shaga Friedman, may he rest in peace. So it was musical, of course. And, and, and uh, like the midst of the rehearsal, I'm thinking of my brother, he just finished the army. He's, he's gorgeous now, but he was very gorgeous <laughs> at that time. So I told the manager, hey, you know what? I got a beautiful brother, he's, he's very handsome, he's a good dancer why don't you join him for the, the musical? So he says, bring him here. So I brought him in. It was right after the army. And he was impressed with him and everything. And we were, like I said, the midst of the rehearsal. We're doing rehearsal after he got accepted. He's not coming to the rehearsal. And it's like he's saying, what's with your brother? And I said, I don't know. We passed that. We did the show for about nine months. Years later, I asked him, no, he said to me, do you remember that you were asking me where was I? And I said, yeah, of course I do. Where were you? So it was in Jaffa, in Alhambra, that we were performing. He said there was downstairs in the theater, not downstairs in the theater, but down from the theater, a billiard club, bar, a billiard. All the Arab were playing. He was going down there and playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> but he was in a low dolly, but then I said, uh, I couldn't I did, I that. did play billiard or snooker, but I never missed the rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I yeah. Three months rehearsals, otherwise I wouldn't be able to be on stage. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'll, I'll go for it. <laughs> Yanni, yes. no Yanni, you, you was not with us in the beginning, but I said that I was looking when I prepared a session for the video of Hello Dolly and I find nothing. Find what? I didn't find the video of Hello Dolly. Ah, he was a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you. <laughs> Sorry. I think he had motorcycle then. Didn't you ride on motorcycle? No. Oh yeah. Back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Every night. Okay. 
So that's the story about my dear brother. We were together on Mihalo Dolly, and it was fun. Nine months. Yeah. On stage. Wow. Every, yeah. That's it. Thank you. And uh, so, thank you so much, Israel, for being with us again two hours, two and a half almost. It's, uh, every time it's nice because I say to the people, one hour, one hour with the choreographer and at least every session is longer and I, it's very nice. Thank you, Ariane. Thank you, Israel. Thank you, Israel, for sharing your story behind the dance. And uh, you are, we are waiting for you in France. I don't know when. When the corona is over. <laughs> we have. We have. We have. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, 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 I'll be there. Yeah, Keep in touch. Thank you, Yehuda, for being yeah. with us. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Hey, hey. Hi, Yehuda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Johnny, I thought about you when he played Don't Ahabat Shaddai. Don't forget, Ahabat Shaddai is Yehuda's yes. favorite, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's myself. Yehuda's favorite. <laughs> now, uh, we are actually lucky to steal Yoni from um, Joni from East Coast, and now she's on the West Coast <laughs> with us. So we kidnapped Joni. <laughs> you are lucky. <laughs> but aren't you in Boston now? She's in Boston right now, no, Joni? Yeah. Joni is visiting her mom. Yeah. yeah. But she's a permanent resident of California, <laughs> so is my wife, Michelle. Can you say hi? Yeah, and say hi. we also got... Uh, Hello. Hey, Mom. There's Mom. Good to see you. California's gain is the East Coast's loss. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after close, thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Yoni. Thank you, Ariane. Thank you for everything. And Johnny, and uh, see you soon in another session, <laughs> all together with uh, some guests again. Take care. Toda Bye. 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 We're looking forward to it. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.